when we set up an isolator for a project to help minimize the in, in and out of supplies, we try to put in as many supplies as we can before it's sterilized. So that includes the caging, the feeders, and because we use the hydropack, we have an adapter that goes on the cage to protect the plastic bag so the animals can't get to it and chew on it. So we would put those items in the isolator before it gets st sterilized. If we were going to use water bottles, we would put the bottles in the isolator before it was sterilized. And any of the basic startup supplies, um, every isolator we put uh, a beaker or some kind of container to hold things, um, scissors. We use uh, uh, grease pens on our cages instead of a cage card. Um, the one caveat I'll say if you're keeping things germ free is these don't autoclave very well. <laughs> um, they, uh, they seem like they autoclave well, but when you go to unravel this to resharpen it, they kind of fall apart. So if you're going to autoclave them, you're only going to get about that much use out of it. Um, so we, we have these gassed, but they are great for that. The Sharpies you can? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So when we're entering supplies, you always want to be safe and wear safety goggles. I'm going to take my cold sterilant and spray down the interior of the port. And then we're going to spray off each supply individually. We request from the manufacturer that our bedding is double bagged. Um, So we can spray it uh, with ease. This would be typical supplies that you're going to put into an isolator. Um, some of them you would put in um, at the beginning and some you'd put in week by week. We try to load the isolator only at a maximum of once per week. So th this size port we can fit in all the supplies we would need to service 28 cages for a week and only have one entry of supplies. So some of the things I'm putting in, um, the beaker, the forceps, they would be in during the setup. Um, the rest, the hydro packs, the feed and the bedding would go in on a weekly or, or every other week basis depending on how many cages were in there. Your tubes for or your swabbing? Do you throw all those in at the beginning or do you, are you putting those in every week as a separate entry? For um, the purposes of these isolators, we do swabbing when the isolator is sterilized to ensure sterility. Uh, if you were doing uh, the germ-free studies, um, you know, I'm not sure I would ask Jamie that question if she's putting them. I would imagine that she's putting in quite a few at the beginning uh, and then replenishing as needed. Can I add one thing? Yeah. Uh, uh, in terms of the, the, the spraying, you know, you're starting off with all autoclaved or, or uh, gassed, uh, you know, packets. Uh, the, another alternate to the spraying is that you would spray and mist the port, but then also have a dip and drip type of system where you completely have two like cages set up like that where you could completely immerse the things and, and it has to be appropriate packaging has to be appropriate for that like for instance the gamma radiated any of the double pack plastics would work that way so you dip it so it's completely immersed and then let it kind of just drip you know the excess drip off but you still everything else then is exactly as as Suan is doing then, then you still spray everything anyways and particularly with germ free that that immersion it just gives you that little extra boost of confidence that you've covered everything so yeah and we have the, kind of an example of what you would use as a dunking station there just something deep and big enough that you could get it completely in and then you'd want an extra tin to shake off the excess okay so I sprayed in all my supplies once I have all my supplies in the port uh, I spray out the port again
You can see on, on our ports, we also have this adapter where if you wanted to use a spray gun like this, you could uh, open this and spray through there. Um, for germ-free projects, we have a wait time of 20 minutes for all our supplies. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm not going to wait the full uh, 20 minutes. Um, the one thing I think is, is very useful, especially if you have um, some petite people working in your facility, is some kind of hook. Um, these are easily autoclavable, and they could be packaged in a breather bag. Um, we just hand spray them, or usually put them in the isolator before we even set it up and do the sterilization of it to help really get supplies in. When you have this port chock full of everything you need for two weeks, it can be difficult to reach all the way to the back, so some kind of hook is very useful. Also very useful in, in if you have larger isolators for rats to have a hook to help reach and grab things. And one other thing that I didn't spray in for this demonstration, but we have just a basic uh, brush, almost like a brush you would use for your car. And this is really helpful uh, when you're cleaning the isolator to go through and dust off the individual shelves once the cages are removed. And you could also kind of wrap a paper towel soaked in sterilant around it to help reach the far corners to get out all the dust and, and food particles. So I'm going to pull the supplies in. From an ergonomic standpoint, it's a little cumbersome to put the wrong hand in the glove, but it's easier. So I just pulled in uh, a few of the supplies. You'd want to set up your isolator. Every technician does it in a little bit of a different way, but you want to set up the isolator so it's most comfortable for you to be able to reach things uh, around, uh, get to everything that you need to get to. And I forgot to spray in my hook. I'll spray that in next time. The next thing I was going to go over is the introduction of animals. Um, Jamie Southern at the Flexible Film Isolator is going to be showing the actual germ-free shipper. We only had one, so we thought it would be better for her to show that with the, uh, the Flexible Film Isolator. What I did want to mention is there is this adapter piece available for this port that you would, if you were using a germ-free shipper, you could either take off this door and slide this in place for using the germ-free shipper. Or you can see ours um, have a port on the side. Uh, and this one actually has one on either side where you could hook the germ-free shipper up um, right to the isolator. If you were doing that, you'd want to use the port on, on this side because the floor is raised. Uh, so you would have to have somebody kind of help you guide the cages into the port. Um, this port, the floor is dropped which is really good for old water or old hydro packs in case they leak. It's kind of contained and doesn't spill back into the isolator. But it's a little more difficult to use the, the port here to get animals in and out. Again, the germ-free shipper is really the best way to get your animals into the isolator. If you didn't have one available or if you were transferring animals within your facility and didn't have a germ-free isolator, what you would want to do is do a transfer within a biosafety cabinet um, and you could use some like an, a Nalgene type container or if you had to um, a cage with a micro isolator lid. So we would autoclave this in a breather bag, spray it into a hood, take it out, very quickly do the transfer. Uh, when you put this in the isolator, you would again want to mist it off. Uh, if you were using a, pretend this is a Nalgene container with a screw on lid, again, you'd have to be very quick, unpack the animals in the hood get them over here, um, mist it off, get it in the isolator, and put the animals away. Uh, when you're putting supplies into and out of the isolator, again, you want to do things as minimally as possible, moving things in and out. That's where your biggest risk point is. Um, 
And I'm just going to spray in my hook so I can get the rest of my supplies in. <laughs> While I'm doing that, does anybody have any questions? What concentration of Clydox are you using when you're actually using it? <laughs> <What are> we, <laughs> um, in, the, in the spray bottles, we use a one to five to one. In our, um, we have a spray lock when animals arrive to the facility before they can be brought in. They come in um, through a spray lock. And in that case, we're using one to 18 to one with a little bit longer wait time. just make one observation also is that if multiple people are working in the isolator uh, it's really important to, to put some kind of signage you know just put a little post-it note tape something on there as far as the the kill time goes so if you loaded it and then somebody goes in and they don't know whether it's been decontaminated are they clean goods inside clean goods you know you have to note that on there uh, you know, very important if multiple people are using it. So, and, and the first thing you always do is to verify that your inner door is closed before you ever open your outer door. Critical. Yeah, that's a great point. All of our technicians have timers they keep with them when they're uh, spraying items into their isolator. So they make sure to get the full, uh, the full wait time. I was in here um, uh, changing the cages if I was going to be servicing the isolator I'd want to do the whole isolator at one time um, so I again minimize the in and out if I had biopsy collection setups to do animals to pull for calling I would again uh, do all that in the same time in the week we try to go into the isolators only once per week um, and check the animals every day. If obviously if there's a wet cage or animal that needs food or water, you have to go in and, and tend to that. But as a general rule of thumb, uh, we try to go in as few times as possible. And again, we just use um, regular paper bags for our trash. We get them in a couple different sizes. So when we're cleaning the cage, we would just dump the dirty bedding into a bag like this, um, fill it up about two thirds of the way and then fold it over. Any other trash, um, your old breather bags, um, we would just dump those in the port. When we have an isolator like this with two ports. A lot of the times the technicians will operate as a clean and dirty. So they'll pull their clean supplies in from one side, push the dirty supplies out from another side which helps keep the floor of the isolator a little cleaner and, and tidier. Uh, if I'm all done uh, in my isolator for the week and I have all my supplies to go out, if I've been here working this whole time and I know that no one sprayed the port, I'll just open the door from the inside and put things in. If I've stepped away for even a second and somebody could have come and done something, I will always uh, re-sterilize my port, just spray it, wait the 20 minutes. It's not worth the risk to save yourself 20 minutes uh, in case someone's been in there. Um, like a, a clean or dirty sign is, is a good tip or a, a port sterilization log, say this was sprayed at this time, is a great tip. Um, so to get things out, it's just kind of the opposite. You would open the inner port door first after ensuring your port sterilized. Uh -huh. Push all your dirty supplies out. There's two clamps to shut on the door to make sure it's locked. And then when it's out here, I can just pull my supplies out. Uh, if you're using this as a quarantine isolator, you might need to spray out your garbage, but if this was a germ-free project, uh, all the trash and supplies could just come right out. Pretend this is my trash. Uh, 
And then since I'm here and I have the port door open, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and spray it again before I before I leave. Shut it up, and again, if I had um, uh, clean, dirty signage or port isolated isolator log, I could mark it on there that I sprayed the port clean and it was sterile as of this time. Um, next thing I was going to talk about is isolator maintenance. When the, when our techs are in the isolator every week, they're going through they they clean the cages row by row. They go and they brush off the shelves every time. Um, our shelves don't go flush to the back, so the debris, most of the debris can fall to the bottom. Uh, they'll go through and take cold sterling on a paper towel and wipe out the whole bottom of, uh, of the isolator and all the shelves to make sure that we're getting all the dirt out. And then it's really important to come through and inspect your, your front and your sleeves for any holes. And the way they do that, um, we use the same cold sterilant Clydox inside the isolator to clean out the inside of the cages and also to clean out the inside of the isolator. So I'm just going to pop this in. What they'll do is pull one sleeve out, spray out the inside of it, spray the whole front of the canopy. If this was Cladox, it'd be a little soapier, so it's easy to see. And that's a really good time to come in. Uh, they take a paper towel, wipe out the inside of the sleeve, and that, that's really forcing them to look really closely for any little pinholes. Um, the sleeves, the seams, uh, is the risk and then also the gloves. So they'll come through, they'll take Clydox and wipe off the gloves with a paper towel and really look them over closely. Um, on these isolators, there, there is a way to clamp off the sleeve and change the glove with the isolator in place. If the technician finds a, a pinhole or a small tear in the isolator, we use just a basic peel and stick uh, pool patch. So what they'll do, they'll identify the hole, clean off the surface, take out one of these patches. Um, they come in a sheet. And they would just cut a round area to match the size of the hole, uh, clean off the area, and just press it on. It holds pretty well. It's nice to have something that's clear so you can tell if it starts to wear out. Uh, we've tried using um, the yellow like two inch tape, um, which will work, but then it kind of makes an obscure patch on the isolator and you can't see through it, you, you can't see everything.